Okay, so I'm not really gonna lie. And I really had to thoroughly think about this before I even made this video because my opinions about this was a little warped, but then I realized why it was so warped. This series is probably one of the better series that has come out in Webtoon Greenlight because as you know, you know, <laughs> you know that trash, <laughs> escape from my <laughs> trash, you know, got greenlit and you know, I was really very, you know, doubting that the next series was gonna be uh, just as bad, but it actually was really, really good. But I realized that this series is actually amazing and it's not the series that's bad, it's the main character. The main character, okay look, the main character is that weeb that you only hear about and you only saw on YouTube. You know that that weeb that you know that is depicted and you know you make fun of him, but then when you actually see one in real life, you're just scared out of your mind. This is exactly what our main character is. She is the definition of top tier cringe that I have ever seen out of any character I've seen. But that's what makes it interesting. Hello everyone, the 25th Genius is back with another Webtoon review. This time we're keeping the trend going with another Webtoon Greenlight review. This one we're gonna review called Forever After, which is a remake of all the Disney princesses and probably other princess stories of all fairy tales from all walks. But we'll get into it. So I wanna talk a little bit about the main character and about how you know, she really just, okay, look, she's just trash, okay? I'm not even gonna try to intelligence is, is about it. Like I said previously, she's just cringe. Like she is so, like like a, a human being who really lives like this, it is just something is just wrong with this person. Like it's okay to like be in reality and be in your fantasy, but she took the fantasy into reality. <clears throat> so you're introduced in the first episode and like she just treats this guy like so bad and I'm like man like you must think she must have like the best stuff in the world or like you just and you're just as illusional as she is so I was really actually happy and relieved when he was like man look dang like who who would want to be with you like and as much as that hurt <clears throat> I'm like man he right who want to be with her like who want to be with someone who thinks that she's a princess 24 flipping 7 at all walks of life. Our main character is very rude. She is crude. She swears like a sailor. She's just, just like bad. Like she's just, she's the epitome of everything that you would despise in a main character, which kind of, I feel hurts the webtoon a little bit because your character, it like, it's too early in the webtoon to really, to really make it really hard concrete like predictions but you know if if she stays the same way like this like it, it's like you have such a good story and a good concept that's just wasted on a character who believes that every waking moment of her life is due to it must her be a princess now we're given reason about why she thinks she wants to be why she wants to be a princess but the issue is it's like it's it's so self-forced her opinion her reason was no one would ever want me so maybe if i'm a princess people want me but the reason why no one really wants you is because you think that you're a princess every waking day like you really think like you're a five-year-old princess in an 18 year old free flipping body you're just extremely extremely creepy and no one really knows how to take this because she's really hot like the, the problem is that she's really really hot like legit and all that hotness is wasted because she is like a four-year-old trapped into a soon-to-be 18-year-old body. Like, I don't know, like with this main character specifically, it's like, I'm not saying the webtoon isn't good because of its main character. That's the best way that I would say it. But let's get into the webtoon. So the webtoon follows our main character, which is by the name of Robin. Robin, from the moment that she was a little girl, has always wanted to be a princess. She wants to be a princess so bad that she even goes to the point of even imitating it in real life. As far as even treating other people as if she, you know, is God's gifts made to earth rather than just being a regular team player. Um, she meets a guy and she thinks that it will be her happily ever after, but it turns out that he's only using her to get community service and he wouldn't dream of even associating with her because she's a very trash human being. This, none of this really surprised me because I was immediately thinking the same thing and I thought this guy was the greatest saint in the world because he could put up with this girl as she is just bullying and just talking all forms of crazy nonsense. 
after feeling depressed that she broke up with her so-called fake boyfriend, uh, she sees a, a dying plane. And you know, not calling 911 or calling the police, she wishes upon a flying plane in which people are dying. That to live in a new world in which she can become a princess. She is granted with this wish as she is whisked into the mystical land of forever after. In this, she must become, she must fulfill the task of the princesses in order to go to the next level. I thought I should mention what is um, interesting about this is that she's not a princess in respect, she is a prince. So our main character is a um, a Prince Charming, and Prince Charming must convince the other uh, fairy tale witch uh, uh, princesses uh, to wake them up out of their slumber or whatever problems that they uh, have. What I really like about this webtoon, honestly, is the comedic route. The comedic route is not over the top, but it's just enough to where you are conveyed the feeling. The main character is a hot garbage and annoying character to really deal or interact with, but if you combine her character with all the other complex and intricate characters of the entire webtoon, you realize that it plays a bigger part in the comedy and the structure of the webtoon rather than just individual actions thereof. Like it was one scene in which like uh, Robin was unable to curse and so she's saying stuff like folk and elf and I really liked how she is like well no one will folk me now and I really got a kick out of that because she's such a very harsh very aggressive very like coarse speaker. And it really feels good that with someone that is that much of what we call in normal English a potty mouth and that you know she uh, gets to experience those things. Uh, first hand. So it is a race against time and the amount of stories as she must go all over forever after to basically help the princesses in their time of need within a certain period of time. The only way for her to leave out of there is by completing all the tasks or basically forget that everything that happened and die within that world. What also is really good about this series Honestly, it's just the overall plot. Um, the plot is a very unique and honestly, I would dare say an unprecedented type uh, of plot because you are introduced with a character who is more like a antagonist than really a protagonist. Introduced with that same antagonist must become the protagonist in the way that she really doesn't want to be. I like how the author set up its story to execute those points very well. And with the plot was so well intricate to the point where I was very satisfied with the amount of chapters that I really received. My biggest issue with a lot of these webtoon green lights was the fact that the third episode really didn't do much to help you. Um, unless you were maybe an avid anime watcher or whatever the case um, may be. But... But a lot of these webtoon green lights, I was very confused at the end of the third chapter, or I felt that they needed to elaborate things very well, or I felt that a little more detail could have been given within the final chapter. The final chapter should be designed to really sell uh, your story, and I felt that a lot of series, even though they were really good, just really you know came up short with that. But with Forever After, it did a really good job with its third episode, actually communicating everything that was needed within episode two, and kind of giving us a little sneak peek of what's to come within the previous other episodes. I think that is really smart and very intelligent, and it shows how effective and efficient the author can write their story and draft their plot. All in all, I really think that. Uh, the author is in the right direction with the plot and the summary and how things are going to be worked and how things are going to be organized. So very big shout out to the author. Um, again, this is a very classic, very good, um, amazing series that, again, yeah, I just uh, hope you definitely check out and yeah, I would definitely watch. I would definitely read it. Would I read it? Definitely. Um, 100% read it. It is very funny. It is very uh, comedic. It is very uh, calculating. It's a really, really good webtoon, but the main character is absolute utter trash, and I would not even look at the same direction. <laughs> But yeah, that is my video. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I, do, I did making it. Let me know your comments about this amazing webtoon series in the comments below. With that being said, I thank you for watching and listening. Have a good day. Mm.